In a forest lived a rather rickety mouse. He was so afraid of the fox, the wolf, and even himself, for that matter, that if the wind blew and a branch cracked, he looked around for a hole he could hide in. Because of this, all the little animals made fun of him. <laughs> How scared is he? You're even scared of the wind. You're so scared. You're, You're so, so scared. scared. You're so scared. <laughs> One day, the mouse got his act together and went over to see the king of the jungle, the lion. The lion had just finished having his lunch. He was taking a nap in front of the cave. The mouse's friends were all curious as to what the mouse had planned. The mouse started to climb up the lion's tail. He got up on the lion's back. With a very confident look on his face, he posed to his friends. Although he was very scared, he was doing everything in his hand not to make it obvious. Right at that moment, the lion woke up. And as he shook his fur, the mouse fell off. The mouse and the lion came eye to eye. All the other animals were worried. Oh no, the lion will swallow the mouse. What nerve, what courage. What are you doing on my back? Kick out the jungle. Please don't eat me. Uh, I'm the most scared of the most swallowable of them all. But life passes on by shaking with fear. If a leaf falls off of the tree, I'm scared. I'm fed up with this. I want to get rid of this fear. You're the king of the jungle. With just one big roar, the animals fear you. Would you consider taking me into your custody? The lion listened to the mouse in silence. The mouse was wondering what his reply was going to be. <laughs> and why should I help you? Give me one good reason as to why I shouldn't eat you. Your help will be returned, I promise. Maybe one day I will help you. As soon as the mouse finished what he had to say, the lion roared in such a way. How can such a tiny mouse as yourself be of any help to me? But seeing the tiny mouse shaking in front of him, the lion decided not to eat him. Thank God I am full. Now get out of my sight. The mouse ran and got away from there. Watching all that was happening from afar, the friends of the mouse were really surprised. Some time had passed by, the lion got hungry and started wandering around in the forest. But he could not notice the hunter's trap and got caught. He was hung in the air in a big net. He tried to break free from the net, but he could not do it. He was the king of the forest, so if he could yell for help, he would be humiliated. And all the hunters would hear him and come to get him faster. Being out of options, he began to wait. Meanwhile, the other animals living in the forest noticed the lion. But nobody could dare get close to him. When he was passing by, Little Mouse saw the lion and he decided to help him. He went directly next to him. He started to climb the lion's long tail and when he reached the net, he began to chew on it. At that moment, the bunny came running next to them. Hey buddy, hurry up, the hunters are coming. 
The other animals who were gathered around suddenly started to run around when they heard the word hunter. But the mouse kept on chewing with persistence. In the end, the net was torn apart and the lion fell down and got away. Come on, jump on my back. Let's get out of here. The mouse jumped on the lion's back and they got away from there. All breathless, the lion arrived in front of his cave. He kneeled down and the mouse jumped off. When you told me that one day you might be able to help me, I underestimated you. I thought you were a tiny mouse with no use at all. But you saved my life. Thank you. It's my pleasure, my king. You don't have to be afraid of me anymore. In fact, you do not need to fear anything because you're a very courageous mouse. If I am the king of the jungle, from now on, you are my courageous prince. Lion and the mouse began to laugh. <laughs> All the animals watching all that was happening from afar came out and applauded the courageous mouse. The lion and the mouse became best friends and the forest lived in peace forever. Once upon a time, right on the edge of the forest lived a golden-haired girl. This golden-yellow-haired girl's name was Goldilocks. She had such amazing and admirable locks that everyone who saw her was mesmerized. But despite her sweetness, at times she could be a rather naughty little girl. Every time she stepped out to play, her mother would have to warn her to behave. Darling, please stay in the backyard and don't go into the woods. Deep into the forest in a shack lived a bear family. A broad-shouldered papa bear, a medium-sized mama bear and a baby bear. Mama bear always woke up early to prepare oatmeal porridge for breakfast. One morning, Baby Bear woke up earlier than usual and wanted to eat his porridge. But it was too hot. Mama, can we go out for a walk in the woods until our porridge cools down? Mama, Papa and Baby Bear left their porridges on the table and went out for a walk. The same morning, Goldilocks was playing in the backyard while waiting for her mum to prepare breakfast. But she was so bored of playing in the same yard all the time and she was very curious about the deep parts of the forest. What would happen if I just went for a walk? She looked around, seeing that no one was around. She began running into the forest. When she got tired, she stopped and looked around. What a beautiful forest! Flowers, trees. Why didn't I come here before? She began to walk deeper into the forest. In the meantime, walking around with his family, the baby bear saw a beehive on the branch of a tree. Such a big beehive! I'm sure it is full of honey! Papa, can we eat some honey? No, my boy. That belongs to the bees. It's their home. We can't go in anybody's home and eat their food. It's not right. You're right. I think I will have to wait until we go home for my breakfast. Meanwhile, Goldilocks walked all by herself for such a long time. Finally, she got lost. She tried to turn back but could not make out the right way. She got really tired and hungry. She was almost in tears of her tiredness. She walked a little more and finally she came to the end of the road. And she came across the house of the bear family in between the trees. She quietly approached the house, walked around it, 
but she could not see anyone. She knocked on the door, but nobody answered. Then she looked through the window. She saw three hot steamy plates on the table. She went back to the door again, and this time she knocked hard. The door opened. Goldilocks was overjoyed. She looked in and yelled, "Anybody home?" When there was no answer, she entered. She approached the table. On the table there were three bowls of porridge: one big, one medium-sized, and one small. Because she was so hungry, she wanted to eat the big one first. But the moment she put the spoon in her mouth, whoo, her mouth burned, because the porridge was still too hot. She immediately reached the medium bowl, but she did not want to eat this either because it was too cold. It's too cold. Finally, she dipped her spoon into the smallest one. Hmm, this porridge is neither cold nor too hot. It's exactly the way I want it. So she ate all the porridge in the smallest bowl. When she was done with her breakfast and felt full, she wanted to sit on one of the three chairs in front of the chimney to rest for a while. One of the three chairs was a big one, the other one medium, and the last one was a small one. First, she tried to sit on the big one, but she couldn't even climb on it. She tried the medium one, but this one was very hard. It was very uncomfortable. Finally, she sat down on the smallest one. This one was very comfortable and exactly her size. But suddenly, the chair broke into pieces with a very loud noise. Goldilocks found herself on the floor, and she did not know what to do. She walked through to the next door, and here there were three beds: a big, a medium-sized, and a small one. First, she tried the big bed. This one was too big for her, and also too hard. Second one was a little bigger than her size, but also too soft. So she lied down on the third and smallest bed. This one was exactly her size, and it was very comfortable. So comfortable that Goldilocks fell asleep right away. Whilst Goldilocks was sleeping, the bear family came back home. Papa Bear had some wood with him that he collected for the chimney. Mama Bear had fresh berries, and Baby Bear just could not wait to have his porridge. When they arrived home, they went straight to the table. Papa Bear had a look at his bowl and was so angry. Somebody tasted my porridge. Mama Bear also looked at her bowl. Somebody also tasted my porridge, and when Baby Bear looked at his bowl, he began to cry. <laughs> that somebody also tasted my oatmeal porridge. Not only tasted it, also ate it all. <laughs> They got up and started to look around. Papa Bear noticed his chair in front of the chimney. Somebody sat on my chair. Look, it's on a different spot. And then it was Mama Bear's turn to complain. Somebody also sat on my chair. And just like before, the baby bear began to cry again. <laughs> Somebody also sat on my chair, but broke it too. <laughs> the bear family curiously went to the bedroom. Somebody lied on my bed. Look how it's undone. Somebody lied on mine too. Somebody lied on my bed too, and it's still 
sleeping in it. <laughs> Papa Bear walked next to Baby Bear's bed and saw that someone really was sleeping in his bed. Slowly lifted up the blankets and they were really surprised to see a little girl sleeping in the bed. What is a little girl doing in our house? <laughs> Tell this little girl to get out of my bed now! <laughs> Waking up to Baby Bear's crying, Goldilocks saw three bears in front of her and she ran out of the room in great fear. She went out of the house and started running without looking back. She got breathless from running, but she did not stop. And she didn't even know which way to go. Right at that moment, she saw her parents coming across from the forest. When she didn't end up going back home, they went out looking for her. Goldilocks was very happy to see her parents. She ran and hugged her mother. <laughs> oh, mummy! We were so worried. Are you okay? From now on, I will always listen to you. I will never leave without letting you know. <laughs> Goldilocks hugged her parents really tight. From that day on, as she promised, she always listened to her parents and did nothing without having their permission. She was a well-behaved and kind girl forever. <laughs>